and it's time for our first discussion. You're watching uh, Pace Setters now. And on today's edition of Pace Setters, uh, we are having co-founder Tradif, uh, Tradifi Africa Innovations Limited. Uh, we're talking about cross-border uh, payment solutions uh, on a thriving market at that. Now, today we are joined with the co-founder of Tradifi, Africa Innovations Limited, or Bruce Daniel. Uh, Bruce Daniel is an entrepreneur who started as a marketer to an organization and got into real estate where he noticed challenge with cross-border transactions, especially when dealing with international clients. And, you know, when we talk about cross-border uh, transactions, at all, it's part of the drive to... Um, enforce well, we are living now in a global village where you know crisp business can crisscross without any restrictions now from experiencing a challenge and the quest of getting the solution tradify was birthed so we have that pleasure of introducing to you obruche daniel obruche thanks for joining us on pay setters Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm I'm being being here. Here. Yeah. Great to have you, sir. Well, it, it's quite uh, interesting. A lot of Nigerians would like to know what, um, you know, Tradify, how Tradify came, uh, came about and, um, and how the journey has been so far. Can you share that with us? Right, sure. Right, sure. Um, actually, it's Tradify, uh, not Tradify. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Um, Tradify came from um, the from observing the predominant need for uh, cross border payments. Uh, it it didn't start today. Tradify has gone through. It has been a process. It's been a journey. So um, it came out from the point whereby I came out of school. Uh, I am my co-founder, and that is a uh, gold Sylvester. And uh, we came out. Uh, we came out of school. Um, I worked in with Bamboo Real Estate, and um, you know I did, I went deep into the real estate industry, and I realized a lot of issues when clients want to make cross border payment, they want to purchase properties, and they always complain about how they're going to send in the money and all that, and uh, you know it was basically a journey. It moved to the point whereby I went. Uh, we both worked with Hansek Markets, and. Um, and you know we work with um, one or two other crypto exchanges, and uh, we realize the need for individuals to be able to send uh, cross uh, money across border. And most of the time, this issue, this delay, and cost, uh, high cost of transaction, cause a lot of delays in business processes. So we wanted to cut that gap. And uh, with last mile payments, and that's what brought about us from it on Tradify. We once came into the market as Dark Limited. Uh, we used to have a, uh, a crypto and a forex bot, and uh, we did all that for a while. And then we thought ourselves, it's time that we actually create a real solution for people. Thank you. All right, talking about creating real solution. Now, walk us through the path. Now, how did you become a verified uh, cross-border payment platform? Please share with us your experience and the processes you took to do this. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, basically, um, ver being verified as a cross-border payment platform, it's not a one-day job. Uh, it's a process. And uh, there's something that one of my mentors, we always say, he always say, um, it's always um, you cannot be hundred uh, percent compliant. It's a process. So we can say as Tradify, we've gone through the process. We went through the basic registrations and all that. And um, the one of the thing that I always advise anyone in the fintech industry or in the payment space is to be smart and leverage on partnerships. Um, partnership is very key to you achieving what you need to achieve. You can't achieve everything at once because compliance cost and uh, within this part of the world is pretty expensive. And you, you we need to understand that you might not be able to achieve compliance in one day. And uh, you need to be strategic. You need to have a team, have um, a very good legal uh, partner um, that you can work with, that we need literally give you a legal roadmap and guide you on how to navigate um the industry so it has been a gradual process and um at least for now we can say that it's been good for us thank you 
Well, let's let you know. Let's try and be you know share some. Let's bring some reality to this. You know, we talk of compliance costs. You 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 noted that it could be very expensive. In what range? So just give us an idea what you know the investment required would be like. Okay. Um, well, it depends on the um, area of payments that you want to focus on. So, for someone who's into cross-border payment, like what we do at Tradify, um, we basically we you need to have a remittance license, and having a remittance license in this part of the world, um, you'll be talking of having a reserve of around um, a mil, uh, hundred thousand, uh, hundred million naira, which is about a hundred thousand dollars or so, and um, you know, <laughs> getting such money as a startup founder, it's it's ludicrous and it can sound almost impossible but like we said partnership is very key you need to understand that to navigate the industry and take things little by little if you want for example you want to go into agency banking which is part of the services uh, that we also render here you will need to have an agency banking license which is which costs some millions also of naira so um it's like i said partnership is very very key if you want to achieve any of this can you give us an idea the kind of partners are you talking about banks or the ones who helped you did you get loans or something the family or friends <laughs> all right thank you um basically when i talk about partnership i'm talking about um corporate partnership like banks um other payment partners who already have these licenses um um one or two just basically um corporate partnership um, a lot of times you need to understand that it's okay to ride on other people's backs and um, get the business done, get the job done to the point whereby you on your own, you can, you know, go out on your own and achieve um, and get some licenses. So, yes, it's very, very key for you to understand that in the industry. So my bro dear brother, just kindly share with us, you know, what kind of qualification one would require um, to do what you're doing now, to be in this area of fintech? Okay. Um, when you talk about qualification, first of all, you must, one thing I always tell people is you, you need to have the right set of people in your team and you need to be someone who is uh, solution-oriented because if uh, in this space, um, if you come in for the wrong reasons, um, a lot of times you you're going to miss it because the space is very competitive. It's very, very tasking. And you need to have understanding of at least the finance industry and um, have a little experience of the finance industry. And uh, even, if, even if you don't have so much experience, you have to learn it. And, um, and then get um, partners or people in your team who have experience of this industry. So, so um, it's basically not a one-man job. It's a teamwork. And you need to understand that you need to get all the missing pieces together and form um, a very, very formidable team and platform. Yeah. All right. Talking about the industry yeah, you're talking now, in this uh, cross-border transaction, how would you rate the Nigerian market? How, is, how competitive is it? Hmm. Um, the Nigerian market is pretty uh, competitive. Um, a lot of people say that the Nigerian market is saturated. Um, but I don't believe so. And if you know very much about payments in this part of the world, you will understand that it's naturally saturated. There are still a lot of people who need this service. The Nigerian market is very, very ripe. We have a lot of people who um, who travel who travel out, and um, they have family members here in this part of the world. They have businesses they are trying to set up, and we also have people who have children uh, who are schooling abroad, and um, the industry is for the taking here. Um, we have so many Nigerians in diaspora and Africans in diaspora generally, not just Nigerians. So there is always, um, payments always happen on a daily basis. So, but the industry here, we say it's not easy to, um, it's pretty very much competitive and it's not easy for anyone who's a startup owner to break in because of uh, a lot of challenges that has been posed. But if you have the right mentorship, you have the right uh, people in your team and you have the right um, partners, you'll be able to navigate it.
Well, Brume, you've talked about challenges and you've mentioned it one or two times. A lot of people, you know, wanting to come into the, you know, your sector would like to, uh, you to share some of those challenges, those critical challenges that, and how they, you, you know, um, they can surmount it, you know, if they come across a challenge and they shouldn't run away, but, you know, they can, if they are ready to do, to stick in there, uh, how they hope to succeed at it. Please, can you share that with us? Mm. Challenges. Um, one of the major challenges in the industry here um, within Nigeria and Africa, um, I would have to say, is um, funding. Um, that is number one. Another challenge is recruiting quality team members. Um, and also, um, another challenge is regulations. Regulations are a major challenge in this part of the world. So um, you need to be able to understand the regulation space because I always tell and what I always say if you're going into fintech is you must first understand the legal view of operating in the industry. You need to first because um, once you once you miss that you you're out, you're out. Why? Because you can get shut down in the at the blink of an eye. You understand. So um, you must first of all make sure you get a good understanding of the legal processes. Have a formidable uh, legal team um, backing you up and um, once you are able to navigate that another thing that you are going to encounter is funding um, we have so many startups within the space here in nigeria and africa um, and it is known that nigeria contributes only nigeria alone contributes about 60 percent of uh, startups in africa yeah because of the industry here it's really we have a lot of people who are trying to break into the industry not just in fintech but in other areas so um funding is pretty limited and a lot of times even when you tend to get partners or vcs um who are who are willing to fund who, are, who maybe might like your project the fact that you are nigerian or maybe you don't have certain registrations um there are a lot of times they tell you you have to be registered in other countries like the us and all so these are some of the challenges that um startups have within the industry here and um you know and um also yeah partnerships strategic partnerships um one thing i can say is that we have a lot of it's a fact we have a lot of systems within the nigerian field that are systems in uh should i use the word legally but the solution isn't working you understand me so it's more like we have so many so many uh, industry or companies with challenges so finding the right partners for you to work with um that have a working solution is also a major issue and one way you can overcome this like i said again is um information uh having the right team members and having to you know put yourself out there don't look beyond nigeria look beyond the nigerian economy be global economy minded you have to look at the industry outside nigeria in other countries in africa around Europe and try to just, you know, put yourself out there. That is one way you can overcome. Thank you. But um, um, before, you know, Emmanuel, you come in, I'd, I'd like to ask, uh, talking about regulation, a lot of businesses talk about, uh, business owners talk about regulation. In your sector, um, it seems that there's a squeeze from regulation. Um, right now, um, do you say the regulation is encouraging to you know, to your sector? Is it encouraging for people to, you know, come in or there's something that needs to be done so that the, the sector can grow? Is there anything that you think regulators, regulators can do to grow, to make sure that we have more people coming into the sector and it can actually thrive? All right, so for regulation, I would say that um, regulation in my sector is pretty um, challenging. Um, you have a lot of uh, requirements, a lot of authorities clamping down on you. And uh, what I can say is, sorry, I, if I was to get your question, can you just repeat your question? So I lost oh, my line of thought there. Know, how, would you, how would you advise the policy makers, the, those who make the rules, on oh, oh, how oh, to oh, improve oh, oh. on their regulation so that it can aid businesses like yourself? Okay, okay. What, are we, what I would say is um, new technology. Um, one of the um, limitations we have here is that people are afraid of what they don't understand. Okay, it's normal to to be scared of what you don't understand. 
And one thing that is really, really creating a lot of difference right now with the industry is blockchain. Blockchain, um, you know, AI, a lot of these things are coming into play. And um, a lot of times, because over years, um, a lot of people don't really understand the advantages and also the risk of um, such uh, technology, um, we just shut it out. So um, I'm very happy, I must commend the Nigerian government with what they're doing right now, with, um, their, um, with the efforts they're making towards improving digital assets um, law here in Nigeria, trying to see how they can bring in Web3 and blockchain into payments. Um, it's still a work in progress. And um, like we said, we are just watching and trying to partake in uh, the whole process to make sure that it becomes legalized and uh, regulated. One of the issues we have is that uh, blockchain or blockchain isn't yet regulated here in this part of the world. And um, I'm happy again, like I said, with the Nigeria government with what they are doing to try to ensure blockchain becomes regulated. So I think one thing that I, will, I would want to say to the government is um, it's okay to, you know, l l get the people who are pioneering this industry to, you know, um, partner with them, understand what um, the advantages and the disadvantages of these technologies are, and uh, see how uh, we can work together as uh, an industry. It's not government versus the industry. It's, it's, it's supposed to be the industry and government working together. Neither is it the industry versus government. So yeah, basically, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so you talked about yeah, uh, people understanding, people really do not go into what they don't understand. And it's, it's very important that people yeah. understand what they're going to because blockchain technology is an emerging market, still an emerging market in, in Africa, in Nigeria. And a lot of people are just trying to synchronize and get used to it. In your take, in your thoughts, what has been the process so far? Uh, as it, as it, is it encouraging the way Nigerians or the way your consumers, your customers are, you know, getting along with this whole process? So how, how far has it been? How good or how, how has it been so far? What I would say is um, from the side of the users or the customers, um, we are having a lot of uh, improvements compared to like three years ago or four years ago. Uh, in the industry, um, but um, you and I know that it's not easy for a layman, somebody who's selling the market or somebody who's selling spare parts to you know relate with blockchain because of the um, the um, how cumbersome um, operating blockchain apps can be. Um, a lot of times, Web three apps can be pretty um, difficult for the layman to understand. So, which is one of the reasons why we have to talk about innovative solutions that bring in Web uh, Web three but present it in form of a Web2 solution, okay? That is simplified, easy for people to use, ease of use, you understand? So one thing if you notice about uh, what we also do at Redify is that we all talk about seamless use, okay? So um, what I will say is um, the users are coming along, but what they're still, um, like we said, what people don't understand they're scared of. So what we can do in the industry is to make um, it more understandable for them. Okay, and, and a lot of companies right now, a lot of organizations are trying to do that, including us here at Redify. And um, also, um, what are we also to say is, um, we need to find a way to actually impute blockchain into payments uh, in a way whereby blockchain also brushes with fiat payments. So a lot of people don't understand, oh, what is USDT? What is, you know, what is uh, USDC stable coins? But people basically understand NERA. Okay, and you saw the, the central bank trying to using the in era and try to find a stable coin that goes with the in era and all that. People still don't understand that. So, but people understand the basic currencies. So, if we can find a way to in, um, bridge the basic fiat currencies with uh, stable coins and payments, I think that's it's going to do. It's going to go a long way. Thank you. Oh, all right, so we could keep talking and talking, but really, can you advise um, why it's critical for people to go uh, to embrace uh, emerging technologies like uh, AI? Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's very critical for um, people to embrace uh, emerging technologies like AI um, because uh, we need to understand we're moving in a very fast-paced world. Um, I remember about um, five years ago, uh, we could settle down and listen to songs that were like five minute songs, four minute songs. But now you see a lot of songs being released today. You see two minutes. I, there's always a song I saw, it was one minute, 50 seconds. 
and people want to have that people we're moving at a very fast pace what basically is what we're trying to say um people are trying don't people are trying to make things faster easier people want to you know don't want to stress themselves anymore because this we are moving living a digital age so what i would say is we need to learn how to embrace this new technology because they make things faster including transactions you know ai has even gone as far as even beyond um these things go as far as predictive analysis um you know uh, try to uh, help people even you know do research and even design design and ai is even today helping us in the tech industry people who are developers now also implement ai to learn and also to implement um, on, um, on code. So you see um, AI and a web chain, I'm fast, you'll see, they'll say web chain, sorry, blockchain uh, is very, very, very important. I believe that everyone should embrace um, these technologies because it's the future. And yeah, we're living in a very fast paced world. All right, uh, just in one minute before we go now, uh, how would you advise young people who want to delve into this uh, industry? What would you tell them? What I would tell okay. my people is, it's I said, it's how simple. would you advise young people who want to delve into this uh, emerging markets, into this industry in Nigeria? What I would say is, know what you're doing. Okay, um, before you come in, um, you need to first of all get knowledge. You need to understand how the landscape works. Um, but you have to be bold, um, you have to um, be consistent, and you have to have a mind for, um, should I use the word, a compassionate mind for people. You have to look, you have to think about solutions. Don't think about the money. It's not about the money. It's about creating solutions. And any other thing comes alongside with it. It's about service. And um, because this industry is basically about service, you need to understand how to serve people, um, your customer support needs to be good. Your, you know, everything needs to be on point. And trust me, it's not an in easy industry, but you can do it. All you need to do, first of all, is first of all, believe in yourself and have the right team, go for knowledge and expose yourself, basically. Yeah. Thank you. In essence, uh, in a nutshell, we can say uh, you're saying that seek first the kingdom of service <laughs> and every other thing shall be added. It shall be added onto well, it. yes. It's been you. such a great pleasure speaking with you. Obruche Daniel <laughs> is a co founder, Tradify Africa Innovations Limited. So much um, you have you know, given to us and our viewers today. I want to thank you for your time, Obruche. It's a great Thank pleasure. You. I hope that we'll get to bring you back some other time on Pay Searches.